right, um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Um, this is a, uh, today is, excuse me, Monday, September 12th, 2022. Um, it is 6.03 p.m. Um, this is a joint meeting of the Ways and Means Committee and the ad hoc uh, additional funding for the new fire station committee. Um, Derek was the chair for that. I don't see him here quite yet. He, he is. He, he, he is. is. Okay, very good. No, That's I'm excellent. Here. Okay, so we'll proceed. Um, let me just get this going. I'm gonna call the meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded by the Ways and Means Committee. If any other persons present are doing the same, you must notify the chairperson at this time. In accordance with MGL Chapter 30A, Section 20G, no person shall address a meeting of a public body without permission of the chair, and all persons shall, at the request of the chair, be silent. No person shall disrupt the proceedings of a meeting of a public body if, after clear warning, from the chair, a person continues to disrupt the proceedings, the chair may order the person to withdraw from the meeting. And if the person does not withdraw, the chair may authorize a constable or other officer to remove the person from the meeting. Um, I'll go first uh, and I will do a roll call of ways and means. Uh, Councilor Jasorger. Here. Councilor Golem. Here, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, yes, <laughs> thank you. Councillor Taranzo? Here. Councillor Healy? Here. And I am Councillor Forgey, so we have a quorum. Um, I believe as um, the chair of the ad hoc, you should do the same. Councillor Healy, take a roll call of the ad hoc. All right, one second. Um, Councillor Forgey? Here. All right. It's been so long. Councillor Ricketts? Present. Okay. And I'm here as well. Okay. Thank you. Um, there are no minutes to be approved of. There is no public hearing and there are no motions. I just want to state that, um, this meeting is a discussion on the status of the new construction on, on the fire station. Well, I should say for the new fire station. So I've asked members of the administration and also members of the public safety committee and our fire chief to be here this evening to give us an overview and background uh, because as everybody is well aware at this point, the bids came in way over uh, what anybody expected. And so I would like to start off uh, with um, an update on the financials, expenditures, and projected costs from the uh, chair, co-chair um, of the building committee. Um. Thank you, Councillor Forgey. I'll defer to Neil Joyce and the mayor to provide that information. Thank you. And Thank so, you. Bush. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Which one of us would you like to go first? Probably Neil. Councillor Forgey, would you please enable me to share my screen and I can give people a graphic of where we are to date, please? Um, I think Danny can do that for you. I might or be able Sheila. to. Do. I want to be a co-host. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. Someone other than I can help you. Thank you. <laughs> what do we? What do I need to do exactly? Make him a co-host. Um, that might help. Yes. Okay.
There we are. Everybody see that? Yes. Thank you. So the uh, first column under the title block will give you uh, the category of work. Um, so under, uh, for example, under owner's project manager, our budget was and remains uh, 535,500 with a $100,000 expenditure to date. Um, architectural and engineering fees are 1.4, just over 1.4 million of which we spent 993,565 to date. Commissioning services, uh, we have original budget of $50,000 and that scope of services has not been awarded yet. Uh, the construction has been updated to reflect cost of the, the total cost of the bid inclusive of the project alternates at $14.47 million. The project expenses line item remains at $220,000. That covers things like construction testing and other miscellaneous project expenses. Uh, FF&E budget has been reforecasted to $615,000, which was consistent with our original request. The temporary uh, substation, of, excuse me, the temporary fire station has been updated to $3.45 million as an estimate. And that is reflective of a six month overage in the duration that the fire department will spend in the temporary quarters. Of that money, we have spent 2.445 million to date and are showing just over a million dollars in the balance remaining. And our contingencies are listed in the bottom, $750,000, which is 5% of the construction bid cost, which is a reasonable amount for a new construction project and a soft cost contingency of 3% of the total of the remaining costs of the project. And that will cover any overages or unforeseen expenses that may come in regarding furniture, fixtures, equipment, or other professional fees associated with the project. So in totaling all of those categories up, it, it reflects a total estimated project budget of $21.7 million, round numbers, of which we have spent $3.567 million to date showing a balance of 18.135 remaining to be spent. In terms of where we are um, in, in comparison to our original budgets, our previous, previous authorizations, excuse me, were $18 million. That shows a supplemental funding needed of $3.7 million which is offset partially by a USDA grant award that the city obtained for $987,000, leaving a net shortfall and a funding request of roughly $2.7 million. And I'm happy to leave this graphic up or take it down and take any questions you may have. This is our initial overview of um, the project and my understanding, Neil, is that if you could, or maybe even the mayor could speak to us about what I understand was a shocking surprise when you opened the bids. <laughs> well, um, I think it's probably more appropriate that Neil to speak to that because he was there. I just came in at the end and saw everybody's shocked faces. But okay. <laughs> so there were um, there were nine general contractors that were qualified to bid on the project, of which there were three project uh, excuse me three general contractors that submitted bids. Um, the bids ranged in value from fourteen point four seven million low bidder up to um, I apologize I don't have it immediately available it was about fifteen point eight million for the construction of the whole station. It was about another million and a half dollars higher. And then we had one bid uh, that was very close to the low bidder. It was plus or minus $100,000. So in total, the bids were 14.4, roughly 14.6, and then one at 15, 
million plus. Um, the largest discrepancies um, that we noted were in the construction budget itself. It represents about a two and a half million dollar overage uh, in comparison to the $12 million that we had originally budgeted for the construction of the project. Um, however, I will tell you that it is uh, rather consistent with what we're seeing statewide for uh, projects that are being bid now and were budgeted prior to um, COVID and the um, onset of the, of the pricing escalations that we've seen over the last year due to a multitude of factors, supply chain um, inefficiencies being one of them. Okay, if, are there any questions that any of the counselors have that are present here right now uh, for uh, Neil? I do. Um, okay, please go ahead. Um, one question I had, so the temporary fire station, um, the, the cost for the six month duration, um, when, when is your co contract up and how does that compare to the project completion date? And does it also include all the additional stipends the firefighters receive for being in the temporary fire station for a longer duration? Um, I'll take the questions in reverse order. Uh, sure. No, the stipends are not included in the capital project budget. Those are funded separately. Um, and then your first question, we are forecasting the, the term of our lease for the temporary fire stations uh, expired in or will expire in July of next year. And we forecasted an additional six months um, in this budget projection for the fire department to remain in the temporary quarters through the end of the 2023 calendar year. Okay, 2023. And, and oh. the, and the cost, the cost associated with that is roughly fifty thousand dollars per month for the extent, the extension of the uh, lease terms for the temporary trailers, as well as the um, apparatus structures. Thank you, uh, Neil. Can you tell us when the contract has to be signed? So the state requires that we do. Uh, what's called a, uh, a notice of award or to uh, notify the low bidder that the project will be moving forward. General bids were received on the 24th of August and by statute, we have 30 days to move forward with the award of the contract. So if we make notification to DA Sullivan, who was the low bidder um, by the 22nd, I believe, which conveniently enough is the day after um, the scheduled hearing at uh, City Council, um, we will be in, in compliance with the statute, but it, it really should not go later than that. So, can so, I ask a follow up? Oh, certainly. Go right ahead, please. Um, so, you were just saying that it's $50,000 extra a month for six months? So That's that would correct. Be 300 grand, but they're, but we're going to be short a million dollars. No, the, the additional appropriation is only uh, for $300,000 for the temporary station. The extra million dollars in that is uh, related to the procurement and purchase of the land. Oh, okay. And that got, but that got put under the temporary station. Sub yes. Total? Yep. Okay. It's in the if you if you notice the title, it's site acquisition in the temporary station. Oh, gotcha. It's just the other ones are minimized. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Sorry for the confusion. No, that's fine. So I'm going to assume, which is also a terrible thing to do. However, if this contract is not signed, then that means you have to go back out to bid and start the whole process again. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Has anybody else got um, some more questions? I, I, I do. I have. Okay, Council Disorder, please. Hi. Um, so, two things. Um, the the extra uh, fifty thousand a month. 
Um, yes. Does that include the fuel? It does that? not. It's a it's an operating expense. It's not a capital expense, so it's funded through their operating budget. Okay. And um, does that? There were two things that I saw in it. Does that three hundred that extra three hundred thousand? Um, and the, I listened to your meeting last week. So the, does that extra 300,000 and maybe like the 200, uh, the, the soft costs, the soft cost contingency, could you, could you sign the bid without that $500,000 borrowing? Um, to be direct, yes. Okay. That's what I thought that Director Gilman said that because. Um, Councilor, Councilor, I would, I would, it would be my recommendation that if we proceed in that manner, that it would, um, we would withhold the $500,000 for furnishings and equipment as that provides us with the greatest flexibility of the expenditure of other funding at the beginning of the project for unforeseen. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, that could be a topic that was uh, revisited at a later date. Well, I watched your meeting. I'd just like to say this, and I am delighted that we're going to get this fire station going and get people into it. And I'm, I'm not really all that surprised. My son's in construction and the house that he's building and every other project that he's working on, I think the, the increases of, in building costs is probably 25% this year. So I, I actually wasn't totally surprised that it was up. And, and as far as the transferring, you know, that from capital stabilization and the bond authorizations um, and I'm, I'm delighted that I'd be happy to do that. I'm delighted that the mayor's put in from ARPA. Thank you. And um, the chief, you did a great job on the grant. So um, can you tell us a little bit about the outbuilding chief? Or maybe I shouldn't be asking that now. No, that's perfectly okay. Um, but before you answer chief, if I could, does everyone on ways and means um, and Penny, I just want to make sure. Uh, does everyone understand that the ask right now is for $2.7 million? And there is a plan that has been presented to us. Uh, you should have gotten a copy of that, how we were going to come up with those additional funds. So I just want to make sure that everybody on Ways and Means and the ad hoc um, understands and has no questions about what is being suggested to fill that gap. Okay, looks good. Okay, um, Chief, go ahead, please. So, um, as part of uh, some of the cost control and working within priorities for the, for the fire department, we had to eliminate uh, a portion of the apparatus for, uh, with the contingency being a small um, outbuilding, if you will. Um, that outbuilding was the primary focus on the grant that we went and uh, were able to obtain, uh, as well as the generator and some uh, some equipment for the EOC. Uh, that outbuilding will store the city's uh, medical PPE. Uh, God forbid we have another... <laughs> Um, uh, event like COVID uh, where we have to stockpile uh, PPE in a climate controlled uh, environment. We, uh, the city did have one. Um, however, it wasn't ideal. Uh, and a lot of the equipment that we had uh, by the time we needed to use it wasn't able to be used. So this is going to be in a heated and air conditioned environment as well as storage for some of our smaller equipment. And it's going to be three bays. Is that what you said? Uh, it, so there'll be enough room for three bays worth of equipment. That's correct. So 
so Councilor Forgey, if, if, if I may, uh, sure. if I could give just a little background of where we got to with the fire station right now from a size standpoint and from a cost standpoint, if that's okay. Sure, that's perfectly fine, Chief. So about 12 years ago, we, uh, we hired an architect, we started working with an architect for, uh, firm to look at a public safety complex. Uh, part of the public safety complex was a lot of shared facilities like uh, a workout room, an EOC, uh, training rooms and whatnot. Um, when it went from a public safety complex to a single firehouse, the estimated cost or the estimated square footage was about 27,000 square feet. Um, and through working closely with the architect and the committee, uh, that has been reduced to 18,645 square feet, um, uh, plus the 1,500, roughly 1,500 square foot outbuilding. Um, that's a reduction of over 7,000 square feet to the project already. Um, at a cost savings to the community, if we took the numbers that we got back from the bid, about $5.25 million uh, that has already been removed uh, from the cost of the project. Uh, and things that uh, um, have been done uh, and reworked uh, without sacrificing the overall operations of the fire department or the safety of, of the firefighters um, is things like, uh, creating a multi-purpose EOC training room rather than having independent rooms, uh, reduction in, in some room sizes, such as the exercise room and some office sizes, uh, having more shared offices and fewer private offices, a reduction in bunk sizes uh, and, and quantities. Uh, obviously we talked about the reduction of the apparatus floor um, and replaced it with the outbuilding. Uh, elimination of uh, triage room at the front entrance, reduction of bathroom. Um, and we still have the required number, but there were bathrooms that were uh, removed from the project reorganized uh, and redid the public entry to cut, cut down on square footage, uh, relocation of non-critical apparatus to a more cost-effective outbuilding, as we talked about. Uh, up, they uh, were really trying to be cognizant of uh, having the best materials and finishings uh, that are appropriate, but uh, the most cost-effective that we can, um, and uh, got creative with our backup heating system. Uh, and uh, used uh, ramps within the building to eliminate fill, backfill and whatnot. Um, so a tremendous amount of work has already gone into the project to try to reduce that. I just throw that out for uh, just for a background of how much work and uh, what we've done to get to where we are uh, right now. And I will say personally, as the fire chief, um, uh, I was uh, <laughs> like everybody else, um, uh, a little shocked with the amount that it came over uh, cost. And I think Neil could address it better than I ha can, but I've looked at a bunch of projects throughout the Commonwealth and some local projects, you know, um, such as the Amherst Library that was budgeted at 36 million and came in at 49. Uh, and uh, a friend of mine who's building a firehouse, uh, a fellow fire chief had $3 million allocated for their project. And when they opened the bids, it came in $2 million over. Um, and so I only say that because, uh, um, like Neil, I think very well said, uh, this is happening across the Commonwealth. So I thank you for your time and I appreciate you, uh, taking extra time to talk to us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, mayor, I, I see your hand is up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I only ha have my hand up because, um, as you know, Liz Gilman isn't able to be here tonight. And so. I have, I'm available to answer questions uh, about the funding package. I'm available to go over that funding package with you. If you need me to, I'm happy to do that. Um, I understand there may be some concerns about the borrowing of the 500,000 and I, I'm, I can address that. Um, so I'm here uh, in, in Liz's capacity. Um, and uh, I did speak to her uh, just a short while ago, and she is still not able to get on here. She's en route from uh, back home from a wedding to, to, that was far away uh, to Indiana. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, just it, when you need me to answer anything, I'm here to do it. Um, you do have a order for uh, prox uh, to appropriate $1.75 million for the new fire station. If that needs further explanation than what you have, I'll do my best. And I can certainly talk about how the funding package was put together and why. Okay. So let's just get through what we, uh, yep. what our first item of business, which was the update on the financials expenditures and projected costs. So um, for the, um, uh, for the, the council and the ad and, and Derek, uh, I don't want to step on, on your toes as the chair of the ad hoc. Um, my, if, if there's any, uh, questions that either of us have on this, um, please bring them forward because if we don't, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Any counselor? I just wanted to ask, I'm, I presume probably is, this was, a, this was a lump sum bid, is that right? Yes. Okay. I know a lot of folks are um, weary about uh, escalating costs. I've seen a lot of them coming in um, where I work that we're running into the same thing where you're like, there's, you know, no way could it possibly cost that much. <laughs> and then, and then it gets even higher when the bids come in. And uh, yeah. Okay. Thank See? you. Is there more? Okay, so we will move on to the next um, request to appropriate. Uh, one Council, million... with, your, with your permission, I'll stop sharing. <laughs> Does anybody need this up? We can okay. always put it back up if need be. Thank you, Neil, that will be great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have a request right now to appropriate, and this will go to full, full council, uh, $1,750,000 for the construction of the new fire station. There's information on page five of, of your uh, paperwork for this evening. There are no motions on this evening uh, either. Um, however, that wouldn't stop us from taking, uh, making motions tonight it, that's really something that we uh, have the opportunity to do independently. So does everybody, anyone have any questions that the $1 million is coming from capital stabilization and the $750,000 is coming from uh, barn, it's, borrow, it's bond proceeds. Um, for people that are new to Ways and Means, the capital stabilization is something that we allocate um, during the budget process. Uh, the mayor requests what she thinks she's going to need to go into that stabilization fund. And at this point, um, I have had a conversation with both uh, she and um, with her, excuse me, and with uh, Liz. Um, talking about the fact that by doing this $1 million, it's going to use up everything that is there right now in our capital stabilization fund. However, the bright side of all of that is we are about to certify free cash and the free cash figure is coming in enormously higher than anybody anticipated um, so it is the intention um, of the mayor and also of the finance director to replace at least a million and maybe the mayor has a more concrete number to replace in the cons building and construction uh, stabilization fund. Mayor, any, any number you can give us or am I on the right track? You're definitely on the right track. Um, just so you know, the balance in capital stabilization right now, and I think it was on your financial order, is a million is. zero nine four zero ten sixty nine. 
Yes. Um, um, so really what we're asking for tonight is not to wipe it all out, <laughs> but close to it. Um, okay. And that's a, a, a million dollars. The intent um, from um, free cash is to replace uh, that million dollars with actually a little bit more. It's, I think it was uh, $2.5 million. That's to be done down the road, just so you know. There's enough in free cash to do that. And that's very important to understand. We can't, we can't spend all of our free cash. There's a number of things that the free cash needs to go to. So, um, the balance of this stabilization fund will, you know, minus the million that we're asking for, will get replaced in some form or other. And, and that will be a financial order to the council down the road, um, just so you understand and so you're, that you're more comfortable with the, the million dollars that's being asked of you this evening, because it's absolutely necessary in order to, um, to make up for this uh, shortfall. Uh, so that's so we, we I hope an I, answer that you, yes. you're looking for. Yeah. Um, it, it's a good answer, thank you. Um, my expectation from pre previous work on the council has been that we will certify free cash and yeah. that there will be financial orders co um, coming quite quickly after the recertification of free cash. Yes, I'm um, sorry about the chorus in the background. There's nothing. That's I okay. <laughs> it's also my understanding that free cash is in Boston to be certified. Is that correct? That is correct. I, we're hopeful that that will happen sometime this week. Everything Great. from Boston takes more time than it should. Okay, thank you. Um, I just that is for clarification of everybody um, that is new to this process. Are there any questions on the million dollar uh, request to take from free cash to fund the fire station? Anybody have any questions on that? I don't, but I have a question on the free cash. You, as well. you, do not, <laughs> you, you do not have a question. You do have a I, question I, on, free on free cash. Yes. Yes. No. Okay. Go ahead. We'll try our what best. Is the, what is the figure of the free cash in total? I wish. I wish I could answer that. I'm sorry. I assume you want me to answer, Councilor. Just estimated, you know. Yeah, I, I, I wish I knew. Uh, I don't know because we are in the process of certifying it, mm -hmm. um, and I, I know that it's well over two million dollars. Well over okay. two million dollars. Probably approaching closer. Probably close approaching closer to three. Okay. The other question is, you know, in the time being during the certification period, which could be a week, could be a month, could be, we, we no, really don't know, right? No, 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 okay. no, it's imminent. It's imminent, Council. Okay, because my, my concern there is if we take all our stabilization and something happens in the next two weeks, what do we do, right? We, we have no, nothing to lean on. We have $96,000 left. And do we have any foreseeable issues that might come up that might need some money? No. Okay. You'll have the and free cash orders on your October meeting. Yeah, there will be. Yeah, it's, it's and, it will it will be part. I'm fairly certain. Um, I say fairly okay. certain because it is dependent on some information that we're getting from the from the state. But uh, there will be orders on your um, October meeting as well with regard to free cash. And the other bonus. I think, you know, if we, we push this live, uh, the fire station through with the free cash, it would be nice to, you know, put some back to give a tax break to the citizens because taxes. That will happen. Longer. That okay. will absolutely happen. Thank you. That is part of why we don't want to spend our free cash on borrowing. Okay, so Councillor Healy, I had the same reaction that you had when I heard that um, from the finance background that I have, it is a little scary, um, but my expectation, I agree, free cash is, you cannot be sure of anything until Boston certifies free cash. And um, that's, that is coming. And I know it is coming. It is the right 
timing and everything else. So yeah. um, I, sh I share that little piece that you were talking about and everything else. Um, but I do, uh, do understand uh, that uh, that is an appropriate place to get the money for the fire station. Any, any questions on the million? Uh, Councillor Forgy? Yes, Councillor just so um, I just, I want um, to point out to answer Derek's question that we have, it's that we're not down to bare bones. We have a regular stabilization fund, which has, I have 2,152,000. And then we also have just, we also have pension stabilization with a million. And um, not that we'd be, I mean, you can take those out under a special circumstance. So it's not, and we have a couple of other funds because we had a total of 5.6 before, 5.6 million before we <clears throat> borrowed. Uh, well, we're gonna take the million probably from that tonight. And what we did uh, in April was I think like 984 out of contractual, uh, out of capital stabilization. So that we've depleted that one, but not the others. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's if a I, good. If I could, Councillor Forgey. Yes, go ahead, Councillor um, Taranzi. So I guess my question, I, I get weary, not for, not for maybe, well, maybe for the same reason, but not, not for, uh, definitive language um i guess is i hear words like the intent is to do this if this happens um is there some other uh area that this money could go let's say let's say everything that we think because we're not yet we don't have a definitive number apparently on um how much is going to be is, is up for being certified by the state. Um, let's just say the, I don't know, close to 3 million that's being talked about ends up getting certified where, what, what assurances or where else would it, where else would it go or could it go besides um, back into this is what I'm saying. Like to, to, to assure that this would be, let's say only, I don't know, for whatever reason, only like, uh, 1.5 million goes in. So, where would that be? Where would that be split up? I guess is is my my ask my question. Um, if if I could please for just a moment, um, uh, free cash can, is is used. Actually, it's there's just a little bit of it becomes a savings account for the town. Mm -hmm. Most of it is allocated to. Um, to these uh, stabilization funds. Um, and that is uh, there for when you have a raining day. And from where I'm sitting right now with this project, it's pouring. So, um, so I am, nothing is a given. Boston has to agree with the number that has been presented to them by the city of Greenfield. Right. That's what they call the certification process. Right. Um, and then the money comes back and can be allocated in many different ways. Um, however, and that allocation is a request that would come to the council from the mayor. So I might want to put $20 in this fund and $20 in that fund. But since there's very little left in capital stabilization and we do have ongoing projects, I would, it, it would be, it would make total sense to me that at least that much money is going to go back into stabilization. It would be an awful, terrible, foolish move, uh, move not to replace capital stabilization. So that, that's my view, having served, um, you know, for a long time in a financial uh, position for the city, um, I am relatively willing to go on a little bit of faith here. <laughs> uh, I just, yeah, I just didn't know where else the, um, 
those funds could be allocated. So that that kind of answers what I was what I was asking where it would end up or could end. Up. Okay. More questions on the million, Councilor Forgy. Um, the mayor, I think, wanted to answer that question as well. Oh well. Give your hand up. I can. I can answer uh, Councillor Taranzo's uh, question. I saw that your hand went up first, so I don't know. We're probably going to say the same thing, but only if Councillor Forgey wants us to answer in terms yeah. of. Yes, Councilor Mayor. Forgey. I think I, I think since we're recorded and we're at a public meeting and everything else, it would be really important uh, sure. for you to state your intentions. Yes. Yeah, so, so Councillor Taranzo, yeah. Uh, there's no question that uh, money will go back into capital stabilization from free cash. There's no question really about the uh, amount per se. Uh, we keep a pretty tight watch on the finances of the city of Greenfield. So the amount that we have sent to the state to um, certify is the, I'm 100% sure the correct amount to certify. Um, and But I just don't know the exact number for you tonight, and I'm sorry, but the range that I gave you is, is accurate. Um, it's just a, a waiting game for the state uh, to certify. But I think they'll, once we, uh, they have it. If they have it now, or they will get it soon, um, they'll they'll certify it and sure. and then we will figure out well we've already figured out where a, a significant amount of it will go a significant amount will go back into capital stabilization as i said uh, which is very important because we do have um uh we do have uh, uh, a lot of capital projects as you know um, mm -hmm. And our bond rating depends on us having an what they what would be considered an appropriate amount of capital stabilization, given right. the amount of capital projects that we have. Um, so that's that's important that that amount of money and I believe it was around two point five million dollars needs to go back into that. Uh, there's a certain amount of that a free cash that will go to reduce the tax rate. We are certain of that. And it's several hundred thousand dollars. And and that's all to the good for the taxpayers. And I'm very happy to be able to do that. What I what I, I guess what I would add is the funding package that we put forward to you um, uh, in its entirety is being done so that the taxpayer doesn't get a direct hit with anything that you vote uh, with regard to the fire station. That doesn't mean that over time, it doesn't hit the tax rate because we know that the capital funding does eventually do that. But, but it is being done, um, uh, presented to you tonight, but also then presented to the full council uh, in, a, in a week or so, um, so that you understand that no, that the it's not a direct hit on the taxpayer, which is really important, I think, um, this time around. So, yeah. if if that helps answer your question, and there's there's probably other places that the money goes, but those are the two biggies: back into capital stabilization and back into um, uh, reducing the tax rate. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And that would, be for, that would be for the second quarter. May I add um, two, two things, Councilor Forgey, just from that? Sure, go ahead. It's kind of piggybacking on the initial question, which is, and I just, I, I don't, I just wanna reiterate that. I know we still have some newer counselors too. And um, I was on the council for, five years back in the day, not that long ago. Um, but free cash, this is a normal site. This is a, a, an abnormal amount and a little bit of um, uh, a lot of, it's, you know, but we've had abnormal times the last few years. But free <laughs> cash is, is certified this time of year all the time. Typically, you the council will vote on where the free cash goes in October. That's almost always the timeline. But DLS does give guidelines um, on what it should be used for. And it is typically for things like replenishing free um, revenue, excuse me, 
replenishing reserve funds um, or one-time expenditures and um, not being used to like replenish a, a, a missing revenue source. So that's something, and I know that that's something I've heard Director Gilman talk about all along is that when one-time money comes, you use it for refilling reserves. So it's almost always that we would be doing this into capital, all the stabilization caps that need it. Ooh. Thank you. Uh, more questions? Okay, is everybody um, ready to move on to the 750,000 that we need to discuss? Okay, this is uh, my understanding. This comes from bond premiums. Um, these are the bond premiums that were issued, I believe, in April of this year. Um, and they are the premiums when we go out to, um, to float our bonds uh, for our projects. People actually pay money to buy, uh, to buy the bonds because municipal bonds are pretty good financial risk. Towns are not, in Massachusetts anyway, they're really not allowed by DOR to go bankrupt. So these are the proceeds from the, the bond sales. I believe one was for the library, the other was for the, uh, the fire station. That's where we get the 750 from. There are multiple purposes that it can be used, but at this point, the, um, uh, the mayor and the finance director have are asking us to approve of allocating the 750 toward the fire station, which is an appropriate use. You can do that. Um, questions from Ways and Means folks. And Penny. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have any. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm, I think it's a great use for the um, bond premiums. I think we used okay. a million for it a year and a half a year and a half ago. We put a million in bond premiums towards this, and I think seven hundred and fifty going towards this is a great idea. I support the. I support that. Okay. Um, I'll move on to the next request, which is to appropriate five hundred thousand dollars for from borrowing for the construction of the new fire station. Um, it says on your notes that there is no backup documentation that is provided. Um, it is, um, in my opinion, unfortunate that Liz isn't here with us this evening to talk a little bit more about this. Um, I just want to be clear that um, I'd like to open up the, qu the questions to the uh, members of Ways and Means. Um, if I can help at any point, I will step in with this. But uh, my understanding of this, and this is what I will say publicly, is that for everybody to know, not just publicly, but everybody to know, my understanding is that there are two pieces to this borrowing. Um, the way I look at it is that we are going to rescind some borrowing from the fire station. I mean, from the library, is that correct? And okay. by doing that, we are reallocating that $500,000 to the total project and the total request. The way in which we are, and this again is my uh, understanding of this, the way in which we are going to go about doing this is that um, by re rescinding $500,000 on the borrowing, the $500,000 amount that the Friends of the Library have given to the mayor will be used to offset that borrowing. Um, so in the financial uh, world, 
it is like one piece is taking the place of the other. One borrowing is being rescinded, the other one is being um, reallocated. So I'm gonna open it up for discussion. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of questions about this one. Uh, counselors, what would you like to know? And I'm here to answer those questions if, if need be. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Chris, I have a question. Yes. Yes, please go how, ahead. How much do you think your your best estimate for how much it will cost us to borrow five hundred thousand? Looking looking at the financial things that we receive that that was that's my biggest question. I know we're going to have another we're, we're going to get almost three million. I figured it was going to be around seven hundred thousand for five hundred thousand. Do you think that's about right? Um, that. That's hard for me to say. I know that whenever you borrow money, it costs money. Um, there's another there's another piece to this uh, to this uh, equation, which is um, I gosh I wish Liz was here. Uh, I the can other answer. piece, or, or I don't uh, know. Finish your sentence, Chris. But I well, can. thank you. Appreciate <laughs> that. Um, there is a piece to this that. Um, if I can, it's um, by doing that, you are retiring $50,000 worth of debt, uh, $500,000 worth of debt. You're retiring that. Um, so that no longer is going to be at play for on on the ledger and you are bringing forward the $500,000 that the friends of the library gave to the mayor to be used to fund the library project. So to me, it, it, to me, it's, it's, it's almost, I don't want to say it's a wash, but um, it's a very, um, It's, it's a difficult, it's difficult to wrap your head around it, I think, at this point. And um, I don't know if I can answer your question, <clears throat> Councillor DeSorger, at this particular time. Um, so I will open it up to other questions. I have a quick question. Um, yes, on the please. borrowing, do we know that so is it the same loan that we have for the library, same interest rate? Do we know what the interest rate is in the duration of the loan? I, what I wanna say, if I may, Councilor sure. Gorgi, is that we are already uh, um, borrowing the 500 for the library. It's just that they have, through the foundation, have returned it to us. So she, uh, Councillor 4G is correct. It's not a wash per se, because interest rates go up and go down. Uh, we get a really good, because of our bond rating, which we always want to protect, we get a better interest rate than say, you know, you, if you went out or anybody, you know, it, it's, it's complicated. I don't know the exact cost of that at the moment, but I think it's worth the cost uh, to do it um, because it is, you know, we're not paying double. We're not paying on the library and the fire station. And that was the intent of the library foundation when they, when they said we will uh, raise $2 million, which if you'll recall all the way back was their promise and they did it. Not all of that is available to us because some of it is in pledges, but they have last September, so a year ago, given, literally given to the city, the uh, 500,000 that we're talking about this evening with the intent of it, if, if needed, it wasn't a, you know, at the time we didn't know if we would need it at all, but if needed, it would go to uh, the fire station because they full well understand their role in why we don't have a fire station today. Um, so they understand that. 
And um, it's through their generosity to not just take that two million and apply it more to the library, but rather to reduce their borrowing. So that is the history and also the reality as we're talking tonight. Now is the time, now is the need. Counselors, um, uh, Counselor Healy, did that, uh, did that answer your question? I was just trying to do math in my head, but I, did, I didn't get the, the duration of the loan or the interest rate, which we, we don't know. So we don't um, know. I mean, we may. Not. I'm just, I'm just concerned if the int, because right now I know everybody knows what's happening with interest rates, right? Um, they're going up and up and up and up, and you know the concern is how does that affect the overall burden on the taxpayer five years down the road? If it, if is it, is it an arm loan? Is it a fixed rate? Is you know? So I, I don't know how the the borrowing works on the city side. I know how it works on my side of the business, but not on your side. It's much different for the municipal side. I mean, we don't, at any moment in time, the calculation, you can't answer the question, how much does it cost to borrow $500,000 right now for a municipality? Um, mm -hmm. Our, our debt repayment plan stays are between 8 and 10%. That's just the, for the payments of the entire budget for the city. And so 8 and 10% of $60 million is still a lot of money. And that's the payment plan. And so what we do is the finance director works with our um, finance professionals out in the field, we have a, you know, we have just like you probably do, we have a, a finance person who works with all of our different numbers and figures out and reinvest, reborrows, moves things around to get the best return and the lowest interest rates on borrowing. So it's kind of a moving target. And when we're borrowing, you know, several million dollars all the time, another $500,000 is, it's hard to calculate what that is. It's just the way it is. I'm looking for the schedule right now just to see what the amount is that we're currently borrowing as of the last budget book, but you can look in the budget book and see. So it's not that people don't, it's just really complicated and is much different than individual finance and the interest rates, the trend does affect cities and towns, you know, when they're going up, but in a very different way and much more slowly and not at the way that it does our individual. And right now we're and not borrowing, it's still inside the planned payback plan. So <clears> it affects <throat> the taxpayers zero because it's part of the eight to 10% planned budget paper, which is part of the municipal budget. I can also say that when we went out to borrow for the library, if I may add to that, thank you, Councilor Porgy. If I may add to that, um, when we went out to borrow for the library in April, we specifically did it so that, because we could see that the interest rates were rising. So we did, managed to borrow at that time at, at the lower municipal um, interest rate. So I, I don't know that there's what the particular savings is and how it impacts this at the moment, but those questions, what I would suggest, and I, you know, if, if, this, if this gets too difficult tonight, um, I'm just gonna throw this out there. You can, you can, uh, obviously do what you wish, but if you feel like you need more information on this and a little more time, I'm half, I'm, I'm comfortable with you tabling this one piece of it, the 500,000. Um, so whatever recommendation you make to the council with regard to the other is what you do, but I'm happy if you, I would suggest even that you if you want to, to table till October, the $500,000 uh, from borrowing. Uh, just so that you, we, we would have the opportunity to um, provide you with the information that you need. And as long as we have all the questions that you have, we can do that. So that's just a suggestion. It's by no means, it's certainly up to you, but I'm gonna offer that out. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Um, I want to recognize um, David Singer, who's co-chair of this building committee. Um, however, before I do that, is there anybody who has a follow-up question or any question on this matter? I, I did have one in regards to the, um, as they were saying, the two million that's that 
you know, was kind of the whole idea. And that, so if, so you're saying, are you saying the other one and a half million is pledged? And when, I guess, when would that be <laughs> come to fruition? Is that at the com completion of the project? Um, is, is that, um, so I guess, and, and when that comes through, what would be essentially the plan of where that money would go? Um, would it would it go back to? Um, I mean, it's, it's clearly not offsetting like real costs right now, because it's it, it's it's pledge is not non existent, right? Uh, so, would that be going back into the capital funding? Uh, that that was just that's just kind of my wonder on on where that would be going because um if we don't have access to it right now <clears throat> i'm speaking from i know a lot of people out i know a lot of people out there were uh, it wasn't one of my concerns uh to be honest but i know that it was for a lot of folks concerns about if that was actually going to happen um if that was going to offset some of the you know two million dollars of the cost of doing the library um and so I guess this is more a, a question for giving other people uh, an answer on, on where that money might, if we can reinvest this 500,000 right now, um, are we reinvesting that one, that 1. 1.5 later? Okay. That make, sorry, that was, I know okay. that, that was really a, a whole bunch of word jumble. <laughs> All right. Um, well, David Singer, please, as chair, as co-chair of the building committee, um, Thank please, you. please take the floor and um, we're interested in what you have to say. Oh, thank you. Some may be, some may not. Um, I guess I want to go a little deeper with this relationship that the fire station has with the library foundation and let you know that the way this conversation is going is really not exactly what's happening because the foundation has to take great care in letting the people who donate to the organization know where the money's going. I'd like to reframe this conversation where we'll get to the same result, but I'd like to frame the discussion in a way that we continue to frame the discussion from this point forward. Um, the foundation is saying that they're looking to raise money to give to the city and that money has to be used for the library project. They have estimated that they have pledges for $2 million and I hope that that's what they receive, but they have received money already and last October, as a result of receiving maybe uh, receiving a lot of money up to date, to date, to date then, they gave a gift to the city of $500,000 saying, here's a gift of $500,000. You have to use it for the library. And that is what the city is going to do. So please, whoever's writing the newspaper article for this, please, the money from the foundation is going to pay for the library. Those dollars are going to the library. Now, thank you very much. That's all finished. The conversation about the library is, with respect to the foundation is done. Now let's move to the next chair. Okay, how is our borrowing looking these days and how would that relate to us helping the fire station? Oh, oh my God, we have a half a million dollars in an account to spend on the library, which means, oh, you mean we don't have to borrow that much money for the for the library so we can what we can actually reduce the library by 500,000 and those things equalize wow that's a great idea as I do with the foundation thank you very much that was a great thing thank you you're now you're, you're out of the room wow what a great idea and not only that but what we can actually borrow $500,000 now for the fire station because we have reduced our debt ceiling by 500,000, so we can push it up again to 500,000. No net change, except of course, interest rates. And again, there are things that Liz will answer that I cannot answer, I'm not even pretending to. That's the conversation. Do we wanna take the benefit we've received from the foundation 
and use it by lowering the, by reducing the fire state of uh, the uh, library by the same amount. And then lo and behold, our debt ceiling has, there's a difference between our borrowing and our debt ceiling of 500,000 and go up. That's it, that's the conversation. Yeah. I think I can understand how the council needs a little more time to digest that. And also may I suggest that there are other options, there are many options for, for filling the money uh, that the fire station needs. Free cash may be an option, it may not be an option, but you haven't had the chance to see what free cash is available. You haven't had a chance to make those decisions. So I think the idea of just borrowing the money as the only option might be premature, but it is a good option. I would like to say as I close on this because of what I just said, thanks to the foundation, we could reduce the um, library, increase the fire station and lo and behold, we're at the same place. So I just wanna make that clear that that's the case. What the foundation will give the city in the future is kind of unknown, and it's not fair for the fire station to pressure them to do anything other than they, what they intend to do and what the people who are donating intend to do. And as a result of those gifts, there might be other decisions that the council can make. Some of them may help the fire station by again reducing the bonding for the library, or it may be for other things. But that is a separate matter independent of the foundation. But the sure. foundation needs to know that when they give this money to the city, every dollar they give will be spent on the library. And that's what I'd like the public to hear from this meeting, that that's, that's the way it's going to go. Thank you very much. Certainly. Thank you. Um, I also want to, there's a couple of other things that I'd like to mention as well, is that the ad hoc committee was put together so that we could find ways to help support and get this project through. Never in our wildest dreams did we think it would need all this money, but it does. So there's a commitment that the council has made to our firefighters, to the fire department. Um, I also wanna say uh, that I am very aware and I am certain that a lot of counselors are very aware that we need to get that fire department uh, building done and we need to get the firefighters out of there and into their own home as it were. Um, now having said all of that, th is there any more comments um, before we move uh, on to the next item on our agenda? Is there a uh, is the, I'd like to take the temperature on this one if we could. Are members of the Ways and Means Committee and the Ad Hoc Committee interested in pulling this piece out so that we can have more discussions about funding sources and, um, and just separate this from the overall uh, request at this particular time? Chris, can I ask a question? Yes, please go ahead. Okay, so I not exactly sure who this question is to. I imagine it's to the mayor. And I think basically the question is, am I tracking this right? Um, the first thing I just wanna say is to thank everyone who's been working so hard on this. And I think that clearly we have agreement that we need to build a fire, fire station. Uh, the big question is how are we getting the funds? Um, and I am brand new to municipal finance. Um, but one thing I know is I, I'm not a, I'm kind of averse to debt. Um, and so I'm trying to make sure I'm tracking this correctly. So what I believe that um, Neil Joyce shared with us is that we need, in order to avoid going back to get new RFPs, we need to sign a contract by uh, within 30 days, which I think is September 22nd. And I believe that um, you answered that we can sign a contract without the $500,000 borrowing. Um, and it sounds uncertain, not a given. Um, somebody said it's not a given, but I hear a lot of confidence that we will be getting the free cash very soon. Um, and so, the question about what the cost is, 
if we do borrow the $500,000, it's uncertain, but there is a cost to the taxpayers if we borrow the money. And I hear that it was originally allocated to the library, but it's still borrowed funds and there is still a cost. Um, and I just want to make sure that I'm tracking all of that. And, and if that is the case, then I am excited to vote on the first two orders and grateful that we have time to uh, discern where the next $500,000 comes from. So yeah, that's the question is, am I getting that right? Yes. Okay. The answer is yes, you are. Okay, thank you. I did have one extra question. Sure, go I'm, ahead, Mike. Um, it's not, I, I would just want to make also clear, like I'm not, these are just questions for the sake of questions, like um, exploring the ideas that are there. It's not any uh, representation of, of, of support or um, uh, unknowing what's, what's going on. I would, I would ask, so when we, if we can, I'm not against just going forward with this $500,000. I, I get where it's very much, you know, moving money and other than as Derek had pointed out, or sorry, Councilor here had pointed out, um, the the amount that might change could be in the interest rate, which is true. Um, the the I, idea that we, we would have to be certain that we could fund this if we're going into a contract with somebody. Um, so I guess I, I would only ask you, where would the other 500,000 come from if we didn't end up voting on this like you you have to have an assurity to back that up um or you're not supposed to take a contract right i mean that's it's like finance law um so that that's all that i was i was worried about but i mean again i don't i don't think that it's i don't think that it should be a deal breaker um for pushing this stuff through i i i think it's def definitely needed um, and you know, it's, it's the way of the world right now that a lot of costs have gone up from what, what anybody anticipated. Um, and it's just, we're another, we're another victim of that, uh, unfortunate circumstance, uh, of the times right now. Uh, Council Toronto, thank you. If I could for, uh, just a moment, um, let me just say, I'm just looking for comments from anybody else at this point, Councillor Healy. Yeah, I, I also want to remind people, um, you know, we have over $860,000 in contingency. And, the, and like uh, Neil Joyce had mentioned, the, the furnishings part of the fire station is, is not part of the construction cost, right? So that, uh, I think it was $600,000, um, is stuff they need for the fire station that isn't necessary to purchase right away, right? So, you know, my gut tells me, okay, why borrow $500,000? We have $860,000 in contingency. Even if I use 40% of that, now I still have $400,000 in contingency floating around that we're not using on the project. Now we only have to borrow $100,000 and our debt ceiling remains low, but that's my personal preference, right? So, okay, because we could always borrow money later on for that. Correct. Am I wrong there? For the Counselor, can I respond to that, please? Sure. Yes, please. The, go only, right Derek, ahead. the only thing I would offer is um, that uh, part of what we're dealing with in the market condition today is extended lead times. And I'll, I'll throw out just an example. Um, currently working on a project, we ordered the network switches which is part of the FF&E package and technology package for that particular project. We ordered those in January, it's August, and we're getting a delivery date for December. So we may not have the ability to wait all that long in order to, to support the FF&E needs. There is a good portion of that that absolutely will wait until it's awarded in the spring. And there's also a piece of that that we'll have to jump on fairly quickly in order to maintain the intended occupancy date of late next year. Sure. So can you do me a favor? Can you identify 
the necessity items that would have to be bought right away to meet lead times, like the network switch or any long lead uh, to time the, item? To, to the best of my ability, I will try to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and we can have some, some additional conversation. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor DeSorga. So I agree with the temperature that's in the room. I agree with what Derek just had to say. And, and uh, also what Catherine, Catherine had to say, I know that we're gonna need all of that. We're, we're actually not gonna need the last $300,000 for July through December, um, the 50,000 a month. That we are not gonna need that until next July. But I realize that to sign the contract, we have to include that number in the mix. But in all practicality, we're not going to be spending that right. every month until next July. So I think there's at least 300,000 that you can identify that you definitely are not spending in your mind. I, I've heard from the fire chief, I think some of the IT things, you want to you wanna be building, uh, you want to be ordering those things and, and getting uh, a lot of the beginning parts of the IT projects uh, paid for at the start of the project. And certainly some of those things we need to pay for initially. But I think we have to remember that the rent is not going to be due uh, a year from July today. So. Okay. Are there any more um, counselors that wish to weigh in? I think we've heard from everybody. Um, okay, so taking the temperature in the room, it seems to me that we probably want to continue this discussion. There will be no recommendation coming out of our committee this evening. Um, I going to ask, do, I'm going to ask somebody who has a parliamentary procedure under in their back pocket. Uh, do we do we vote to table this until our meeting on the 20th? I, Councilor I Corsi, I, I did see a Councilor Ricketts hand up. Just okay, a, thank you. Thank you, ago, Mayor. You may have something to add. Yes, I'm so, sorry, Councilor Ricketts, I didn't see you. Sorry. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm basically in favor of just moving forward with this. But as far as your last question, you could either vote to table it and get more information, or you can vote to um, just say you have no recommendation at this time and let full council decide. So whatever is best. Mm -hmm. There may be Thank people you. that do not want to hold this up, and you know we want to just keep it going and. We've waited this long and we're waiting for all these amounts to come in and I don't want to put the brakes on anything at this point. Can, can we make a Thank motion you. to approve the 1750000 Vote on that. I think everybody's yes, in agreement on that one. Would you like to make that motion, Councillor Hill? I would like to make that uh, the motion to approve. Let me just get my language up. <laughs> $1,750,000 for the construction of the new fire station. Second to Sorga. So is there any discussion on this? This is not, this is a motion coming right from our floor. Uh, it's a, it will be a positive recommendation that we would be adopting this to council on the 21st. I, I mean, I would honestly say, uh, if this is the turn, the discussion part here, um, I'd be, I'd be willing to add that extra um, 500 that we're talking about. I don't, I don't really know that we're going to get much more out of the next month. Um, just sitting on it. Um, in, I mean, in le I mean, if somebody else has like real, uh, like legitimate questions as to what we would, as the mayor requested, like you give us, give us a list and, uh, you know, and they'll be able to answer questions. I don't really have anything that I think is, going to get answered um but I don't, I don't want to speak for everybody but i would be willing to even add tack that on to uh 
to Councillor Healy's request. Okay, so uh, we have a couple of things going on here. If you um, wish to make an amendment, right? Because the motion is specifically for one million seven hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars. You are, you can do that. That is, uh, that is appropriate, but that is up to you. Of course, we need a second on that. I mean, I guess I, I would guess I would move to amend it. If we're doing motions tonight, then I mean, we might as well, so it could go to full council uh, next week. I would, I would move to amend um, the previous motion to to add on the five hundred thousand uh, from borrowing for the construction of a new fire station, bringing the total to two point two five zero million. Is there a second to that motion for amendment? Hello, okay. <laughs> okay, hearing none, uh, the amendment fails. We are back to the original um, request, which is $1,750,000 for the construction of the new fireplace, a uh, fireplace. Yeah, that too. I'd like one Very in the fire station. Fire Thank you. I would. Just, I'd like it. just okay. for the record, there's no fireplace in this station. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So we have an amendment. We have a motion in front of us at this point. Is there any discussion on it at all? Okay. All in favor of Voting one million seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars as a pause going forward as a positive recommendation toward the construction of the new fire station. Please so indicate. Raising your hands, say aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? Okay. There is a positive recommendation going to council. Uh, on the 21st to approve the $1,750,000 for construction of the new fire station. Okay, we have the, uh, we have to make a recommendation on the request to appropriate $500,000 from borrowing for the construction of the new fire station. Um, is there any kind of a motion at this point? Of the room, we're good. <laughs> no, okay. Do we want to table this motion and bring it back? I mean, it's not a motion. Do we want to table this item uh, right now and bring it back either on the 20th or the 21st? Does anybody have any comment on it? Okay, so if we don't have any comment on this, I am going to uh, say that we, it has come out, it hasn't come out of committee, but it has no recommendation at this particular time. I'm gonna ask for this discussion to be continued on our uh, Ways and Means uh, Committee on the 20th. And we will, uh, we will address it again at that time. Is that okay with everybody on the committee? Sure. Are there any any reasons for not doing this? Okay, it'll be continued to our next meeting. All right, we have one other piece of business tonight, which is the resolution for the agreement of the city council to submit requests for financial assistance from the U.S. Department of Agriculture and Rural Development, which is page 12 in your packet. And I will read the, here it is. I will read the resolution. Um, it's a resolution of the Greenfield City Council to agree to financial assistance from the United States Department of Agricultural and Rural Development. Be it resolved that the C Greenfield City Council agrees to accept financial assistance from the United States Department of Agriculture, USDA, Rural Development, in the amount of $987,000 to finance the fire station project. Be it further resolved that the city council 
of the city of Greenfield authorizes the mayor to sign all documents relating to the USDA Rural Development Loan and or grant. Is there a motion for positive recommendation or is there a motion for recommendation? Yeah, so moved. May I have a second? Second disorder. Thank you. Who made the motion, please, Mike? Uh, that was Mike. That was me, Mike Charles. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any discussion about this? This is a formality. Okay, if there's no discussion, then everybody please indicate <clears throat> uh, by saying aye and raising your hands in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay, there will be a positive recommendation going out to council um, on that language to accept that grant. So any other business the committee has at this point? Anybody have any business? Okay, our next meeting is September 20th, 2022 at 6 p.m. via Zoom conferencing system unless otherwise posted. I want to thank all the members of the fire station building committee, our fire chief, our mayor, and our chief of staff. And I'd like very much to thank all the members of the Ways and Means Committee who showed up and made this meeting and this discussion possible. Um, thank you once again. We'll see you on the 20th. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved, Disorga. Second that. Taranza. If okay. I may say so, Councillor 4G, yes, thank you to everyone. It was a great conversation and I appreciate your attention to this. It's such an important thing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much, Mayor. All right. All in favor, please indicate aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Any abstentions? <laughs> okay. The meeting is adjourned at 730. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks, Alrighty. everybody, Thank for you. supporting us. Goodbye. We appreciate it greatly.